Good evening and welcome to CSSJC meeting. Can people hear me? Okay. Um, I'll be facilitating the meeting this evening until Allegra joins us. So let's, um, I'll call the meeting to order and um, I will call each member and um, please uh, respond that you're here. Philip. Here. Deborah. Here. Ricky. Here. Okay. So, um, so let's review the agenda item. Um, Ms. Pamela, can you put it up? I have a, um, a hard copy with me. If not, that's fine. So, yeah. So our agenda tonight are uh, announcements and then public comment. I uh, will have a member reports and then action and discussion items, CRES and DEI updates, um, update on um, ROB, uh, RFP consult consultant uh, progress, Youth Empowerment Center, and of the follow-up to May 10 meeting, uh, meeting draft to town manager. Council, CSSJC. Letter regarding police chief, upper funds to repair harm, ramp violation, Drake. Review of CSSJC charge, update on new membership and goodbyes to departing members, public comment, upcoming agenda items and meeting schedules. Other topics, the chair did not reasonably anticipate 48 hours in advance of the meeting and adjournment. So do members have announcements to make tonight? It doesn't have to be just mem uh, members, uh, our staff liaisons, you know, does anybody have announcements to make? Yeah, I would just mention the the uh, ancestral bridges walk on Saturday, the Juneteenth uh, history walk from uh, 10 a.m. at the West Cemetery, the Emily Dickinson Museum, and then uh, uh, for, uh, some things on the common. Uh, hope everyone sends good good energy for weather. Um, and then Monday, obviously, I let Pamela talk a little bit more about the town Juneteenth celebration, uh, which I believe is 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and then the 24th is Community Safety Day. Um, at the Mill River from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and it's a good opportunity for folks to come meet responders, um, get a sense of kind of what we're doing. Well, most of us will have our families there. So it's a nice way for us to kind of ingratiate ourselves into the community. So I look forward to seeing as many folks as can make it. So, so um, what is that? What is what is what is safety me. day? Excuse no, me. I just safety wanted to ask. Is a, oh, sorry, is an event by the Senior Center um, where they invent all the public safety departments to come down uh, to Mill River. So, but yeah, I just uh, wanted like the cl clarification on that. Yeah, absolutely. So if people want to speak, raise your hand. So Frankie. Um, yeah, this isn't so much a an announcement, but it's a request that all those who have um, events planned for Juneteenth, if that could be disseminated within the group. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, uh, Ms. Pamela. Yeah, so I, um, I actually wanna advise everybody to take a look at the town website in regards to both of those Juneteenth events because there's discussion because of the weather that there may either be cancellation or changes. Um, I know that uh, Jennifer's gonna make a decision tomorrow whether to move the town's uh, Juneteenth uh, events into the high school. Um, although it's not scheduled to rain on Monday, 
if there's rain um, on Saturday and Sunday, the town common is not uh, usable really for a tent and stage. And so it, it may have to, to go in, in, indoors. So she'll make those uh, decisions to, tomorrow and we'll certainly share that information with everybody. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I have one. Um, on okay, so Tuesday evening at 6.30 at the Bing Center, there is discussions held about the affordable housing with um, the Affordable Housing Trust, Board of Health, the Human Rights Commission. Um, and so that's more of a listening session to gather information from um, homeowners, renters, people that want to live in town, people that work in town. And it's uh, the idea of it is to then write a report and send it off to town council. So if you could let people know to come and speak, there's also on the flyer a QR code that has a couple of questions. So if you can't make it to that event, if um, you're interested in giving kind of what you want to say, um, that flyer can also be sent out. Thank you for sharing. I saw that flyer, I believe they have CSSJC as well. Oh, right, yes, sorry. Yeah, as part of the listening session. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea to, to have such. Freke, I ha you have your hands up still. Can you hear me, Freke? I can. Okay. I'm going to bring yeah. it down. Oh, okay. So I have a couple. Um, so June 19th from 4 p.m. till 6-ish, um, Black Business Association of Amherst Area and San Sankofa will be uh, celebrating Juneteenth Jamboree at uh, Mill River. Rain or shine, we will be there. Although I've begun this weekend there, uh, for a few days, but we're still planning to have that. There's free food, free drinks, entertainment. Uh, nobody has to spend any money attending the event. We're still accepting sponsorship to, from organizations that are actively addressing racism. We've just done in, uh, accept sponsorship if you have concerns around individuals or organizations that, that have not started addressing discrimination. So I have one more announcement to make. Dr. Demetria Shabazz has resigned from CSSJC. effective today. Oh, wow. So um, public comments, moving on. Uh, do we have any audience? Let's see. Oh, what am I doing? Hold on. It seems like there's one uh, hand up. Oh, OK. I, I can't say it. Can you help me? Uh, Ms. Pamela. Right, I'll, um, I will move uh, Vera over into the panelist. Okay, go ahead, Vera. It's gonna take her a minute to probably get there. So. Okay. So she should be coming in now. All right, um, just bear with me. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, this screen. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to, uh, for my public comments, um, state that um, I want to thank um, Ms. Pamela Young for putting together the response to my human rights complaint. Um, it was 10 pages. Um, there were multiple exhibits, A through E. I encourage each and every one of you to review it. Um, based on um, what 
um, Ms. Young put together, I am proceeding and I did submit um, a complaint with the State Ethics Commission against the Building Commissioner Bob Mora for his handling of the um, accessible ramp to stages in this town. Um, as you know, Hazel's Blue Lagoon was made to comply with the law around accessibility, architectural accessibility, and the Drake was allowed to not have a permanent ramp um, to their stage. And the state um, disability folks came and, and saw that they needed to uh, apply for a variance if they wanted to uh, continue operating the way they were that the Drake is operating without a permanent ramp to their stage. So, um, which brings me to the way that building commissioners should have addressed this. Um, I learned that um, Commissioner Mora should have told the Drake that they needed to uh, apply for the variance um, before he could issue them uh, an occupancy license. What he did was issue them an occupancy license without instructing them to apply for a variance with the state. So the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board never received an application from them until a year after um, they um, were fully operating. And it only happened because of my complaint, because I felt aggrieved um, on behalf of Hazel's Blue Lagoon, the owners who has suffered so much monetarily trying to conform with the uh, hurdles that this town has put them through. And to see that the Drake was allowed to um, establish um, without any, um, with, with pretty much uh, all green lights, um, they weren't zoned to, to operate as the entity that they um, currently operate as, which is a nightclub. Um, that wasn't zoned for them to do that, but the town of Amherst allowed them to, to do it um, in a very quick way without having to go through hearings and all of those things. And to hear that this, the stage was allowed to be constructed without a ramp um, was just so blatant and so egregious that um, today I, I just had, I felt the need to, to take it a step further because um, if our local officials can't um, provide confidence um, in the way they handle um, people in this community and businesses, then we have to rely on the state. And so I just wanted to share that with you as part of my public comment. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to make public comment? I can't see, so no. Uh Pamela, you're muted. You're muted. No one else is in the audience other than the Amherst Indy, so no other hands okay. are raised. Okay, thank you. So our next agenda is member reports. Does anyone have stuff they want to share with us? Oh, Deborah, okay. Yeah, so it's not necessarily a member report, but I guess I'm just having, and I don't know where to talk about this, I'm just having a, a, an issue with how like our meetings are getting um, posted or not, I guess that's the, that's the thing. Um, you know, like we're not getting agendas beforehand. Um, you know, like we have to switch this around, you know, um, you know, and, and for me, my time is very valuable. I, I don't just work on this committee. I have other committees that I'm on and obviously I have family responsibilities and things like that. So I guess I'm trying to get a sense of, you know, well, I guess what I'm asking for is that, you know, our, when we set a schedule date and time, because we've had even time changes and things like that, you know, where I'm like, okay, the meeting's at 630, but actually it's at six, so it's at 530. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't work like that. I, I, I need things, you know, and when we were on CSWG, things were done on time, posted on time. And then also it, 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 it shows badly on this committee. If, we, if we're not taking things seriously, if we're changing schedules and things like that. You know what I'm saying? So I guess, you know, I wanna say that publicly that we need to stick to when we say we're gonna meet at this day, that we're gonna meet 
when we have agenda items, we have the agenda items is posted. If it has to be posted 48 hours beforehand, then it needs to be posted and that we need to get the agenda beforehand so that we have a chance to review, to kind of think through things like today, I don't even have a copy of the agenda and stuff. So, you know, things need to, you know, need to get it together um, because, you know, I, I don't work like that. And, and I don't want this committee to fail, basically. I want this committee to be very successful. This was recommended by the CSWG. Um, it's a very serious committee, very important committee. And so if we're, if we're messing around with schedules, people are not gonna know, like I can't tell people to join, you know what I'm saying? If we're switching things last minute. So that's what I need to say. Thank you, Philip. Yeah, I think I just want to pick back off of what Deb um, was saying and just say that if this committee is open to it and being that it's going to be shrinking, I would suggest probably coming up with a set date and time. I think that has really helped out in two committees that I'm in because then I just know at every month, like my third Tuesday is booked and my third Wednesday is booked. And so I can just plan around that. So that's just a, a more of a suggestion than anything. Thank you for your suggestion. So I um, just want, oh, if I could just respond. So I um, apologize. I'm not quite sure what happened uh, this week or this month, but I do know that Jennifer has been incredibly, incredibly uh, busy and burdened. She had her graduation, she had to plan the, you know, HRC Youth Hero Awards. Um, she's been planning for Juneteenth, um, as well as supporting the um, African Heritage Reparation Assembly and the DAC because I was out for two weeks. So when there's a small, you know, when there's only two people in the office and a million things to do, sometimes things, um, you know, fall off of the plate. But I, I, it certainly has been, I think, the overall history that most of the time the meetings have been posted and the agendas have been made, made available um, in advance. Um, so, you know, I can apologize and obviously we'll strive to do better uh, to, be, to make that, to increase the uh, times that we're 100% accurate, but it's been, the last six weeks have been very, very tough. And, and I've been out of the office quite a bit. Thank you. Um, so I just have a quick one. I watch uh, a rerun of, um, I believe it's the finance committee or town council meeting or joint where departments, uh, you know, attended, department heads attended. And when it came to, you know, DEI department, I was just surprised that no mention of CSSJC or HLC, especially HLC that does a lot of celebrations, like funding, you know, uh, for these two groups. I mean, Jennifer is doing a lot with almost little resources. Juneteenth, for example, is such a popular event that the town should be able to provide funding so that people can attend and eat free food, just like, you know, that was done with the Hero Award. People should not be going to Juneteenth in our town to pay for food. And this is why, part reason why my group, BBAA, you know, decided to have our own. It's open to the community. So um, I just wanted to say that, you know, DEI department is only two people. They can just do so much. I kind of figured out, you know, that's reason why we didn't have our meeting yesterday. I have a lot of sympathy to both Ms. Pamela and also to Ms. Moistin, they're doing a lot. Um, it can be, um, you know, really overwhelming and stressful. And that's why this body is pushing for, you know, staffing that was um, recommended by CSWG. I know we, rec we recommended um, 
additional staffing, um, that, that that didn't happen. So um, I personally, I understand um, about the switch of date and time. And Deborah and Philip, I agree. It's good to have consistency. People want to take our committee seriously. People, you know, look forward to if they want to like listen in so they know that every Wednesday, you know, second Wednesday of each month. So I get that too. Yes, yeah, Ms. So, um, well, I actually have my hand up. Um, oh, you did first? Okay, yeah. Deborah, go ahead. Yeah, you know, just to, just to go back to what um, Pamela said. So thank you, you know, obviously I do see, you know, Jennifer, um, you know, I've seen at some of the community events and I understand that you all are a small office and, and you have a lot going on. So, you know, and, and as Ms. Pat said, that's why at all these different meetings that we've been going on, we've been saying you also get a higher budget and have more staff. Um, because the thing is, is that, you know, because the, you all are so overwhelmed, then something has to go. And then an important committee such as this one, then it gets impacted. So that's not OK, too. You know what I'm saying? So definitely I understand. I'm not saying, you know, obviously I understand the, the amount of work. But hopefully moving forward, and that's why I wanted to say it publicly so that the town can hear and the town manager and so on and so forth can understand that, you know, we're not going anywhere. This, this committee is going to continue to stay strong and continue to do its work. But in order for it to do its work, it has to be able to, you know, um, function in a way that is dependable and the schedules are set and the agenda is put beforehand so that people know so that they can, you know, participate and be able to know what it is that we're going to be discussing. Thank you. Ms. Kim? Yeah, so I just um, wanted to respond a little bit about the, um, the finance uh, committee uh, meeting that you saw. Uh, as you know, this is my first time going through the budgetary process. And um, in advance of that meeting, the finance director gave me some idea of uh, the questions that I should expect to hear from the committee and what type of information I needed to provide to them in advance. So the, um, the information that you referred to as far as like the need for additional finances to support cultural events and other activities of the office were certainly expressed and included in our um, written information that went to the okay. finance committee, but okay. they um, control the meeting and they didn't ask any of the questions that, That's that, true. That, yeah. that I that I anticipated or that it was suggested to me that they to prepare for. None of those. Um, the other thing that I think is really important, and I've had conversations with the finance director and the town manager about that, is that our uh, office budget does not fully uh, reflect the support that we're getting from the town because it doesn't include like support from press and ARPA funds. It doesn't, there's, it doesn't um, include support that we're getting from Amherst College or, or other donations. Not to say that we are, should be relying on those other donations, but it doesn't present the full picture. And so um, I've, I've had some conversations with the finance director and the town manager about ways in which we can show the full picture for the budget. And lastly, and Philip will may speak to this as well, as part of the HRC annual report, the suggestion was that that report include a reference to the number of activities, the number of people who participated and the financial cost for conducting those activities. So, you know, we're, we're certainly aware of that and working towards it. Thank you for the explanation. So where can we get the written report? Um, is that on the website or? So uh, I don't really know. I mean, I, if I had a series of questions that I was um, asked to answer and submit to Sean, I think it becomes a part of the public document, like the big binder of the town's report once okay. everything is finalized, but I don't think it's been finalized yet. Okay. Carl has his hand up, so he might know more about that. Yeah, actually, if you go to the finance committee, the meetings we all had, 
in the minutes of those meetings. Um, usually the report is there um, in addition to being in the budget book. Um, and I can try to pull that up for folks and maybe get it to Pamela and we can include it uh, next time you all meet. Okay. Anything else on uh, member report? Moving on. Okay, let's see. Um, so uh, updates, Chris and DEI. Uh, I will Any of you can go, whoever wanna go first. Should I go first, Pamela? Awesome. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to say today we got our second vehicle. Um, so for the first time in our existence, we are not reliant on any other department to get around, which uh, it's only been true for about three hours, but it feels pretty nice. Um, Operations are, are stabilizing to what we can do with our capacity currently. Um, we're in a place right now where we're having to slow down some of the kind of regular engagement pieces in preparation to start 911. Um, we have a lot of folks who are really using our services really robustly, and we want to give them an off ramp so that it isn't just that we start 911 and we're not able to meet those needs. Um, so we're trying to condense um, calls. Example, sometimes we'll have someone who calls for a doctor's appointment and a grocery trip and a pharmacy trip in the same week, trying to get those all into one engagement, um, trying to get folks access to other supports that can meet those needs, uh, and trying to do as warm of a handoff as we can. So not just saying, call these folks, they'll take care of it, but really kind of supporting that relationship to, to make sense. Um, Kat Newman and I went to Washington, D.C. Uh, the first two days of June for the first national convening of alternative uh, dispatch programs. Um, it was hosted by Georgetown and NYU. Um, we had presentations from the Department of Justice, um, some really interesting, uh, thoughtful folks who have been in this work for a very long time. Uh, I'm really proud to say that that we stand in that mix, that the way we've done things um, is consistent with the larger successful programs, uh, as well as, I think, continuing to meet the needs of our community and not letting uh, kind of what other folks are doing blind us from the reality of, of Amherst. Um, that was a really successful trip. Now we're we're having some conversations with uh, private uh, funders, uh, places who may be able to help us um, Kind of expand, which once we start 911, that'll be the next thing on my plate. Um, you know, the, the hill we're climbing right now is starting 911 services. The hill after that is obviously expansion. Um, just to give you all some of the parameters, we are, if not the smallest, one of the smallest. There may be one department. Uh, Northampton will be slightly smaller than us when they start. Um, the largest department in the country is Albuquerque. They have 130 staff. Um, Denver is going 24 seven this year. We will be watching closely, including have, having regular monthly meetings with the folks there to get a sense of what are the challenges, how are they navigating them? Um, and they, they're being very generous with their time. Um, we're setting up regular contact points with Durham, North Carolina, who has some similar components to us to really get to problem solve some of those things. Um, we have, a we have been awarded, uh, there is kind of a gold standard grant right now that the larger places have, and, and we have uh, been awarded that. Um, we not able to really announce it yet, but there will be a press release in between this meeting and your next meeting. And I'd be glad to come back and talk about that. Um, but for me, uh, I just I say that to say, this was a hill the town has tried to climb twice. Um, and both times were unsuccessful. The first time was before I got here. Um, the second time, it was the one of the first things I did was write this grant. Losing it didn't feel very good. Um, so this third time, I think, um, feels like redemption. It, it feels like validation of the idea. And it obviously uh, feels like validation of the process. Um, Deb and some of the other CSWG folks will be on a panel with me and a couple responders at the Smith School of Social Work um, conference. I, I forget the exact name, Deborah. Do you remember it? I don't remember the, the name. It's at Smith College. I, I forget the name of the, the conference, but it's on the uh, 23rd. And what time are we presenting? I think we're at like 11. I, I will. Uh, if you go on the Smith website, you can find all the details. You can find us in there. One of the pieces that I just want to point out to folks that we learned going to D.C. and some of the conversations we've had is that folks are very much watching our process. Um, 
um, if you look at the way Cambridge, Cambridge is starting a community responder department. Um, their initial budget is going to be $3.1 million, entirely funded by the municipal government. Um, they largely followed the path that was set in Amherst. Um, they just were able to expedite it because they were able to learn from, from our mistakes, but also our successes. They didn't have to replicate all of them. I'm really proud of the fact that there are departments across the country that are looking at things that happened here before I got here. Uh, the CSWG, the folks who were involved in that process, the way it happened, um, and finding real value in that. Um, I think that's also part of my job is to spread the kind of how of CREST, not just uh, what we do. Um, responders, I think, remain enthusiastic about their jobs. I'm glad to participate and help where they can. Um, I'm trying to think we had a really... Uh, we, we were able to help uh, a person who's been struggling with a, a hoarding challenge for a significant period of time for several years, uh, finally uh, move to uh, find a space that is more uh, that they're able to live in. Uh, we also, one of the things I'm really proud of, uh, someone who we, we've really tried to get housed actually has been accepted to the Safe Havens program in Greenfield. Um, the person who had been homeless on the streets in Amherst for years has been in treatment for about 60 days now, um, which is a, a huge win and for that person. And we're proud that we got to be uh, a small part of that. Um, we are, uh, as of the middle of next week, we will have done everything we can do to start the 911 uh, process. Um, now it sits in the hands of the uh, police chief and the dispatch director. Um, my expectation, my hope, um, I think a shared hope is that we will start doing them this summer, but I think I finally passed the time where I can say um, after this summer, uh, we, we will have been prepared. It'll be incumbent on other folks to, to allow us to do the work now. We are ready to do it. Um, and so I know I've been tempered on that point in the past. I, I, I also was committed to telling you when that point had passed. That point has passed. My folks are as good as anybody taking 911 calls in the country. Uh, they're talented. They're enthusiastic. They are capable. Um, we are deserving of the opportunity to begin taking 911 calls. We've done what we have to do, um, which I'm proud of. And it absolutely was a group effort. Um, my coworkers are incredible folks, and and I, I just I lo I got the short straw on who gets to stay up late with you. But uh, I wish you got to see all of them because they're they're just some of my favorite human beings. Um, again, uh, just a, another thing to reiterate: uh, we are continuing to uh, show up anywhere we're invited. Um, that has looked like now doing some de-escalation trainings for some peer substance communities in the area. Um, and really trying to then support uh, those folks to have a bigger presence in Amherst as we, um, you know, summer happens and we start to see some of the folks who are harder to see when there's so many students around and realizing that the substance use problem we're encountering is more substantial um, than we've seen in a long time. And just, uh, I, you know, any public space I get to be in, I would warn folks who are using substances these days, the fentanyl can be in just about anything, to please be cautious, to please engage with folks like tapestry. Um, and I think that's just something, there's never a bad place to say that these days. Um, it's become such a, a big place. So, uh, sorry, I don't think I have any huge exciting updates this this month, uh, just kind of that we are you know, this phase of our, our um, upscaling is, is just about complete. We will, once we say start taking 911 calls, there will certainly be a, a one to three month period where we're really focused on making sure that is going as well as it can be. Um, but we are aggressively looking at grants. Um, and that is the part of the budget that I control is the ability to go out and get funding from other places. And so I want folks to know that we are doing our absolute uh, best. We're working tirelessly to try to get as many resources as we can through every means that we have. So uh, I think that's it for today. Thank you very much. Um, does anybody have questions for Mr. Miller? Yes, Deb. Yeah, so um, thank you, Earl, for the presentation. Um, you know, I'm glad that, you know, obviously you all have been doing a lot, and but I'm glad that you all are, are, are seeming to, to be going to the next step. Um, so I just want a little bit more clarity in terms of the 911 call. So when is it that it's actually starting? So that obviously we can put the word out there. And so what does that actually mean in practice, right? So what are you all's hours? And so with the 911, does that impact anything in terms of hours? Because as you all know, like in terms of CSWG, 
we want appropriate funding first and foremost, and we also want it to be 24 seven and we want you all to res be responsive to everything that is non-criminal, you know, all violations that's non-criminal. You know, I know that that's obviously something to reach towards and to get to, but I guess I wanna get more of a sense, right? Really kind of practical in the box type of, you know, what does it mean that you all are going to 911? And when you say you're ready to kind of continue moving forward, like do you have kind of like a timeline in terms of what that means? Uh, so I guess I'll probably work back there. I don't have a timeline. Um, a lot of these decisions are out of my hands. So uh, it would be, you know, I, I could say that we could be ready as fast as we can, but they will take work from other folks. Um, our hours will not change um, with the budget that we currently have, with the staffing that we currently have, we could not stretch any further. Um, the grant writing that we'll be doing will in large part hopefully be to um, bring positions to the department to allow us to expand. Um, but we would we need um, probably double our staff to get to 24 seven. We also would need some leadership roles. So um, again, the part of that that I'm in control of is looking for outside revenue for applying for grants. Um, obviously I hope that the town budget, you know, will will increase to support us as we move but what i'm in control of is is seeking those opportunities where they're available um as far as our operations i, I don't exactly know how it will impact it's kind of like one of those things I, I don't know exactly what it'll look like until we turn the switch on um i'm anticipating if i think of how it's gone in other communities that it starts off like a little bit of a drip um, that people aren't quite comfortable not having the traditional response for a few weeks until they see it work somewhere um, and then kind of highlighting those things. Um, but we will, you know, we will be on social media sharing when we start 911. We will share it as much as we can with the folks in our network. Um, we will be as vocal as we can about it. Um, and as as far as the when of 911, um, that is a decision that I'm I'm not, I haven't been presented to make. Um, if it was up to me, we would start July 1st. Um, I believe that is when we will be prepared. I think that represents uh, the, the time to start. Um, that decision is currently in the hands of the dispatch director and the police chief. And um, we are having conversations. They continue to be collaborative. Um, but I, I do want to stand pat by we are ready this summer to go. Thank you. Does anybody else have questions for, oh, for him? I see no hands. Can I can I just take oh. one quick moment of go privilege ahead. before I go? Uh, go Philip, I'm I am going to miss you dearly. Um I I know that um oh, this, thank you. <laughs> this role requires lots of things and, and you bring your full self to it. And um for all the folks in this group who aren't gonna be here, I hope you never feel like you can't just knock on my door if you have a, a criticism or a thought or feedback or anything. Um, and Philip, I, that might have to be a phone call for you, um, but I hope that you'll always be a presence in, in my world, at least. I've benefited greatly um, from both the positive reinforcement and there are days where you guys were the only positive voice I, I had uh, and the hard feedback, which I needed. Um, and I, I kind of think of this as uh, you guys helping to keep me balanced and I greatly appreciate it. And I, I appreciate the labor of folks in this process, just like the folks on the CSWG you'll always have. Uh, You'll always have Crest to come. Say whatever you need to say to us. We'll always be here to listen. I just want to thank you for your time and energy. It's been incredibly important. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, the I update. All right. So I'll just um, echo what Earl said, Philip, and I'll get to see you again next week and then later again. So you'll get to hear from me um, a couple of different times. So the office has continued with our staff training with a workshop on allyship that was presented by Yana McClure. And we had held DEI workshops today for the health department and the senior center. Uh, Crest was supposed to join us, but they had two days of mental health, um, department of mental health mandatory training. And so we will work with them um, at another time. Uh, the fire department was supposed to be scheduled for their training, but um, due to my illness, that had to be postponed. So we're, we will um, return to do to the training for the fire department. Um, uh, Yara also did a training for the community on allyship that was held on, at the Bank Center on a Saturday morning. 
And um, it, um, the title of it was uh, being an ally, um, being a, I don't know if the white was in the title, but being, I think being a white ally, ally, not a savior. And it was fairly well attended considering it was a Saturday morning um, with about 13 folks there. Um, so that work is continuing and we, you know, we'll continue to do our planning for additional workshops throughout the summer and um, really gear more up in the fall when we know that folks are back around and not on vacation. Um, I'm gonna just go into some of the other things that are also on, uh, on the list. So the uh, resident oversight board request for proposal period ended. Uh, the town is in the midst of the procurement process for a consultant. The town received one proposal from a firm, Jensen Hughes, and I am very limited in what I can say about that because of the uh, Mass General Law Chapter 30B, but um, I can say that there will be further updates coming in the coming weeks as they complete the review of the proposal and you know the discussions around it, so that's unfortunately there's not a lot um, I can I can say there. I I will say that um, I had expected more responses um, because there is a consultant who is um, in uh, the in Cambridge, Massachusetts, um, who does this area, uh, who is an expert in this area. Um, um, but I can report that that consultant is actually part of the Jensen Hughes team. So we're in some ways getting a twofer um, if we're able to complete the process. Um, the Youth Empowerment uh, Center, I, I think at the conclusion of the, of the town meeting, and as I said, like I've been out for a few weeks, so my memory is not 100%. But I believe that what was the next step was supposed to be for the town manager to convene a working group um, that consists of um, the, uh, you know, Ray Hart from Rec, myself, and others. Um, that has not occurred yet, but um, uh, Cress and I are moving ahead with our plans to hire an AmeriCorps or to host an AmeriCorps member. I attended the AmeriCorps supervisors training in Greenfield last week. Um, we're hopeful that we'll have a placement. We um, we haven't gotten a placement yet, but you know they're hopeful that we will have someone in place um, for August. And in addition to that, I um, have started a, um, a anti, it's the ADL um, Anti Defamation League training for ed educators for working with youth. On uh, around bias, um, and uh, I just started. It's a five-week program, so I just started that program today. It'll end towards the end of July, but all of that training is geared to help prepare for us to do program youth um, programming in the fall. So whether we have an AmeriCorps volunteer or not, it is the intention of the office to start um, to provide some youth programming. And um, Jen and I met yesterday, you know, um, with the director of the library at Amherst College, who has, and I, I think it's okay for me to say this publicly, who has offered um, space and support around hosting events um, at the college for you. So, um, so we're we're looking for ways to really build that programming, both in terms of substance and um, as far as uh, different spaces are, uh, around town are concerned. And, um, you know, Earl, Earl mentioned earlier the, um, the Juneteenth event that is scheduled for Monday, the Youth Hero Awards, I think uh, uh, I can say were a huge success. This is, I'm sort of, Juneteenth will be my first year of going through all of the events for the, um, you know, for the office and for the HRC. And I really, people had talked about the Youth Hero Awards, but I had really no concept of what um, had, a, you know, what that really meant until this past week. And I think we had well over 300 people there. It was a joint event with the Human Rights Commission, the Race Amity Group, 
in the uh, Julius Ford, um, Harriet Tubman, healthy living community who volunteered and helped serve food and set up. And so um, we are hopeful that that will be also be a joint event next year um, because it really brought a lot of different segments of the community together. And Philip might want to add more to that. I, I unfortunately spent most of my time serving food, so I can't tell you a lot about what occurred with the with the awards or with the basketball game. And um, I think that's it for um, our updates. Thank you so much. Questions? Deborah. Yeah, thanks Pamela for the um, update. And, you know, I, I was at the, uh, event, the Youth Hero Awards. And, you know, I'm part of the, I'm also part of the Julius Ford Harry Tubman Healthy Living Community. And so I know a lot of our volunteers were there to um, assist. And, you know, we were one of the, you know, main partners last year in terms of putting, you know, the festival and bringing all these groups together and everything. So I'm, I'm happy that, you know, it's continuing. And, and like you said, hopefully it'll continue on an annual basis because it was a beautiful uh, event. Uh, you know, as you stated, a lot of people, it was a beautiful day, and, you know, it was just a lot of positivity, which was great. Um, so I have a couple of questions is around, like, the resident um, oversight board. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that we had brought up, or I had brought up last time was that, you know, I know there was an RFP, and I think it was somewhere on a website, but I, I just wanted to get a copy of that. So what that mm -hmm. RFP actually you know said in terms of what the, the what you all will be hiring the consultant to do because you know as um cssjc and, and hrc with a joint statement that we sent out we we felt like there is a lot there that was very repetitive from what cswg had already um included in its report so you know this resident oversight board needs to happen very quickly and so we don't want you know time to be or i don't want time to be wasted I'm going over things that CSWG already recommended and, and did because we did a lot of research to put together the structure that was in the report that was very detailed and very specific in terms of um, some of the aspects. I know there are other aspects of resident oversight board that obviously needs a little bit more work because there was only so much time that we had to do that. So I just don't want there to be more, you know, time just spent going over things that were already done before. So, um, if you can share that information and also, you know, is there a timeline in terms of the resident oversight board? I know, you know, it's going to be hiring a consultant, but what does that mean? And, and what do you foresee in terms of when will the resident oversight board actually be in place um, is, is, you know, the ultimate question. So one uh, copy of the RFP. You know, whether there are, you know, this consultant is going to be doing things that CSWG already did and then a timeline. So those are three of my questions. And then my, my last question is from the youth empowerment, which again, we had, you know, I had kind of made my my comments around it, which is we CSWG included a lot of information around that. I know the next step you were saying was talking to some of these other offices, which, you know, as I stated. If if you're not if you all are not talking to young people, I think that you know what are we doing there? You know what I'm saying? It's just about putting this together with young people being the leaders. They're the ones that know what what they need for their youth empowerment and the center. And really, is finding a space, putting the budget together, and and making this happen. I think we're wasting a lot of time again doing the same things that that were already done and. Um, and so, you know, we're going to keep pushing and we're going to keep putting pressure to make sure that this gets done, you know, more quickly. So I want to get, you know, more detail from you in terms of why are we there with the youth empowerment, which is basically nowhere. That's how I feel. I mean, I get it that you're going to have a, someone, you're going to be doing some programming, but we're talking about a center. We want a center up and running. So let me uh, try to answer the first three, three questions first. So um, the I'll be happy to send you the RFP. It was on the 
you know, um, a finance or accounting department website, but I didn't really find it that easy to um, um, navigate. So, but I, you know, that is an easy one to do, uh, to do is to, to send it out. Um, the, the RFP does state that the expectation for the consultant is that they will build on the work of the community safety working group, that there's not an expectation that there will be a repetition of the work, but an, ex an expectation that they will, you know, thoroughly review those reports, have an understanding and build, um, build on that work. The timeline uh, um, is not set in stone, and that is simply because until there is a signed contract, uh, we won't know what the timeline is, and um, I can't as I said, speak to in details about the procurement process. But, um, you know, I am hopeful that, um, I, I'm actually hopeful that be, by the time that this group meets in July, that the, that question might be answered. But I, I don't have any, any answer for a timeline at, at this point. Um, and so as far as the Youth Empowerment Center is concerned, you know, I uh, am really limited in what I am able to do with the resources that I have. I think it's a, a very important goal. I, um, I think that, um, that, you know, I can understand the, the, the desire and demand to have a center, but I don't have, I don't have the ability to create that with the office that I currently have. But what I can do is offer programming and look for places to start the work. And that's what I'm trying to do. Thank you. Philip, I see your hand raised. Yeah, I, my questions or comments are around the Youth Empowerment Center. And I think Deborah put it very um, much what I was going to say about just incorporating um, youth, in particular BIPOC youth voices as to what it is they would like to do. But I would also give an offer that um, in my time as a youth uh, growing up in California, that there was a teen center that I went to after school to kind of stay out of trouble. And, you know, they had field trips that uh, that was my first time that I was able to go to a beach in California. So that is something to think about um, field trip wise, as well as um, classes with just living that I think some of our youth may not even know is a option. Like I remember I did some cooking classes. I know there was some classes on like, uh, like how do you apply for a job? How do you do a resume? Like different things like that. Like those are important skills and things that need to happen that Maybe a team will suggest, maybe they won't, but just to look into and to consider offering those types of things. Because, yes, I 100% I back and think that if tomorrow we could dub a building the Youth Empowerment Center for the time being, that would be great on the town and then build, start building one. But if there is not going to be one tomorrow, I do appreciate your efforts on trying to make something happen for the teams in town and having a 12 year old that is currently going into 13, I, I, I would much appreciate that if I was still living in town past June or July. Yeah, so I, I think the goal for the, um, for the AmeriCorps volunteer um, is to do that um, engagement with the youth and to really um, uh, help them think about um, and support them as they develop their own their own desires for programming. And I also know that the community safety working group had a very detailed sort of outline of what types of the variety of different types of programming. So around entrepreneurship, around um, college admissions. So all of that I think it will be taken into place and having a person in place who can, can be that connection point and you know, conduct the, um, um, or assist in conducting some of the presentations, I think will be very helpful that rather than having a woman with, you know, as much gray hair as I, as I have, uh, try to engage in those conversations. And, um, and I, I will say that I modeled this approach after um, sort of a similar story to you, Philip, when I was um, in high school in California, um, I, uh, our 
county government had a commission where each high school got to ascend a representative um, and that commission would meet on a monthly basis and help plan activities for the entire county. Um, and we were assisted by, you know, staff people who were young adults. And that's sort of the model that, that I have um, for how we can get something, you know, started in, in the fall. That's, that's certainly the intent, um, you know, and I think we'll be able to do it. Okay, so I have a couple of comments. It's actually not question, and this is more what I've observed with some committees in our town. I attended as an audience of another committee, Disability Access committee, whatever, um, that group, just like CSSJC, just like HLC, they're just advisory. So that's what the issue is. That's the elephant in the room. If I were to continue with CSSJC, something I would have pushed in the future, and this is for Deborah, Freak, Freke, Allegra, is that by the nature of CSSJC, the town government, the town council, doesn't appreciate the resources that CSSJC brings. We are just advisory group. I would like to see CSSJC, HRC, that are made up of mostly people of color to have the same power as say planning board, for example. Like if we say we need youth center, we need youth center. It's not up to the town to tell us they don't have the money, find the money. It's not up to the town to plan their own youth youth activities. No, that's not enough. It's something that that's not good enough. That's not what the kids, CSS, CSWG, kids themselves, we have a youth who sat on CSWG. He reached out to his friends. Seven Gen, they did their own research. Kids want a space they call their own, not some college space, not some school space, not you know, moving them all around. No. So I will hope whatever the next group is going to be additional new people, hear me out. The, the way the, what do you call it? The way the committee is right now, it needs to move from an advisory, advisory board to whatever we want to call it. But we cannot just continue to be an advisory board because nothing will happen. I lost, um, can people still hear me? Can people still hear me? Okay, why did I lose picture? Yeah, so that's the comment I want to make because I'm very frustrated that for three years, we still don't have youth center. And we have money to approve Jones Library. What message are we sending to you, you, uh, our youth in this town? We're not even talking about bicultural center. So I'm just, you know, it, it's very frustrating. I just want to put that out. And Ms. Pamela, I thank you for all your efforts, but, you know, I think CSWG vision of this group is to work with you collaboratively so that we know, I mean, we appreciate you giving us update. This is not what I envisioned for the DEI and CRES, that we know we collaborate, we work with the heads about what is happening, um, you know, push for funding. And it's just, yeah, it's, yeah. And it's not just unique to CSSJC, you know, there are other, other, other committees are advisory and yeah, it's, it's not, it's wasting people's time, I'm sorry. That's all I wanna say. 
why did I lose? Okay. Wait, Can uh, people still? I, I wanted to say one more thing. Yes, please. So yeah, and, and I think I was thinking about that. And then Ms. Pat, when you started talking, it made me think more about it. Like you said, it's just like, you know, right now in terms of CSSJC and HRC, um, you know, but obviously I'll speak of CSSJC because this is our group, um, which like you said, is majority uh, BIPOC people. Um, and it's, it's one of those things that it's kind of like, um, why aren't we more uh, embedded within the town structure, right? Yeah. So that then we're not an afterthought. So that then it's not kind of like, you know, people come to us after things have happened, or after yeah. decisions have been made. Yeah. Um, so we need to, to have these conversations more so with the town council, with Lynn or whomever and the town manager, because like you stated, town manager hasn't even been to one of our meetings. Um, so it's, it's, how is it that our, you know, our thoughts, our feedback, you know, we're the ones that have the connections with the community. So why is it that we're not being consulted, you know, throughout the process, as opposed to after the process. So, um, these are some of the things that, you know, moving forward, I, I know, I understand that obviously we're, we're losing a lot of valuable members, uh, but we're still going to have to continue to, 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 you know, to find and, and battle this and, and think this through because you know that needs to be the next step, right? How can we be embedded so that we are, are a part of the decision-making process? Thank you, well said. Anybody else? Thank you, Ms. Pamela for your updates. Okay, so um, the next item is for us to approve um, the draft letter that Allegra put together uh, regarding the May 10th joint meeting. Do we have that letter to be put up? I do not have the letter. I can um, see if it was in a recent email. I don't, um, from Allegra, did she email it recently to the group or to Jennifer? So Are I, you? yeah, so what we can do, it's okay. What we can do, we can skip that when Allegra joins us, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, she'll be able to share it. Is that okay with people? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think the same thing is going to will also be the case with the letter regarding the police chief. Do you have that document, Ms. Pamela? That's no, okay. I, okay, yeah. so we're, yeah. So if it's okay for people, we're going to skip C and D. Is that okay? Okay. So this, this brings me just briefly, since um, one audience that spoke today, I don't want to repeat what she said, but as you, as you, you probably know by now that we live in two different worlds in our town. Um, we have two night, night, night clubs that were treated differently. One, uh, Hazel lost revenue for eight months because of uh, licensing uh, permitting process while the Drake owned by white entity used influence and access to town officials to get whatever they need. And on top of it, they also got, got $300,000 upper funds. So um, we have a long way to go in our town. Yes, we're a liberal town. Um, I think we do, it, we, we do a lot better by talking so much and doing less. Um, so I have concerns about our town, how marginalized group are being treated, especially the business community. So I just want to throw that out. And um, I hope the town will do the right thing when the upper distribution of funds will come up again, because I still money left from upper funds to do the right thing. Does anybody have anything to say on this? Yes, uh, Deb. 
Yeah. So, I mean, obviously for me, this is a, a you know, a new issue. I just learned about it. Um, obviously very concerning, um, you know, because, you know, you know, all you can do is rely, right? You're relying on the town to make these decisions. And then when you're seeing that the, these decisions are being uh, made inequitable and inequitably, then it's very concerning. Um, this is exactly what we're talking about, right? It can't be, you know, one way for, for, for some people and then a def different way for BIPOC people or people who are marginalized for a variety of different identities, right? Um, and so, you know, you know, again, reparations <laughs> need to happen uh, for this. This needs to be taken seriously. Um, you know, seems like what Vera stated was that there's, there's you know, uh, um, you know, that Pamela, that you wrote something that kind of details, you know, more of the information. So obviously, you know, that needs to be acted upon so that then, you know, some type of reparation or what have you can take place. Um, because if not, then that's where, when we're talking about healing, right, we've talked about that, bringing the town together for healing. That's where it's just like, how can you heal when there's no trust? You know, because when you see these types of things happening over and over again, and we see that it's BIPOC people and, and people uh, who are, you know, different identities are the ones that always get the short end of the stick, right? And so, um, so I, my, my um, thing is that I want to continue to get updates on this so that the, the town knows that we're watching this and that we expect that there's going to be some type of uh, reparation um, for Hazel's um, and that moving forward, <laughs> things are going to be done differently. And why? How are things going to be done differently? That that's the, that's some of the things that I'd be interested in finding out more about. Thank you. All right. Um, I mean, I I want just to add that I encourage the public for people to go and watch the disability access committee, DASC. They're meeting on, today is Thursday, I believe they're meeting on Tuesday, June, today is 14, right? uh, today is 14, right? Yeah, yeah they, June 14. they met on June, um, Tuesday, 12. June 13. June 12th, right? Okay. The, thir the 13th. Thirteen. when they okay, met. Okay, whatever. Today's the 15th. Today's 15th, okay. So I encourage the public to please watch that meeting, it just is an example of how scared people are in this town. Six wonderful, good human beings, good people deliberated on this, on this issue that the, that the audience had to, you know, make comment about. And a vote came. I was in the audience. I spoke about racism, about Hazel and uh, um, uh, Drake. And some of them really were uncomfortable voting for Drake who wanted to get variants from the state for, for, for temporary ramp that they had. And they flip their votes because they were scared. Only one member was brave enough to abstain. And I wanna be in touch with that, that young man for doing the right thing. But it tells you how scared people are in this town. I want people to go watch it at least maybe 10 minutes from the meeting, you know, it didn't start immediately, but when it came to Drake presenting to the committee, I want people to, to take their time and watch it and see drama play out. And that's why people don't wanna serve in this town. They're scared, they're scared. Here comes Allegra, all right, all right. Welcome, Ali Grant. Thank so, you. Yeah. So basically, we did most of the I agenda items, but we we have we haven't done the 
the draft meeting that is on the agenda and the letter to the police. We haven't done that yet. Okay. Um, uh, Take your time. Yeah. I don't remember ever getting the agenda, so I'm just going to pull it up. Okay, some. sure. Yeah. So uh, we're on the action discussion items. So we've had the CRES and DAI updates, okay. including a uh, resident oversight board update on youth, uh, youth activities. And then we skipped the follow-up May 10 meeting draft because you were in here. We also skipped letter regarding the police chief. I, I briefly shared my concerns around you know, how Hazel and Drake were treated. So that's where we are. Okay. Um, I also want to let you know that uh, Dr. Demetria Shabazz has resigned effective late today. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, so I know the police chief letter has already been sent. Um, I think that was supposed to just be in the packet to show us what it said. Oh, okay. And we all did get an email on that too. I, I, I got it. Yeah. I found it. Okay. And Pamela, I just sent it to you like five minutes ago. I didn't see I didn't see that. The one it that was sent better? like a couple months ago, couple, uh, several weeks ago, though. Oh, okay, I must have missed right? it. Right? So. I think, so. yeah, so I think it was sent, it had been sent before our joint meeting with town yeah. council because it had been sent out asking for comments following the April meeting or, um, and I, there was only one comment made on the draft that was sent out. So that was incorporated and then it was sent. Um, Can you just resend it to uh, uh, like uh, send me a yep. copy? I appreciate Absolutely. It. Mm -hmm. um, and then. So the the last thing that we have on action items would be the letter to follow up on town council meeting. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you have the um, document? Yeah. I let me see if I can pull it up on my email. I'm sorry, I'm okay. not. On the That's okay. Place that I wrote it on. Um. Let me see. Yeah, I think I see it here. It was you sent it to us June six. Okay. Let's see. I think I can, if I can screen share, um, I might be able to pull it up. Hold on. Uh, let's see. So let me open. Right. Oh, God. All right. I'm just trying to get this up here. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, um, oh, okay. Is that it? Let's see. So tiny. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I, let me and see if I can enable some editing and uh, I'll have to it's hold that on a one. second. It's not that one? A, no, I think it's a letter that was sent to the town manager. No, that was here. that's the letter for to be sent to town manager town council after um like to follow up on the oh yeah, yeah 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 okay so is this it that yeah. looked like yeah yeah that was it okay can, can you send it back okay. again all right let me try to screen share again i tried to increase the size 
so so why why you're doing that i just want to comment you know thank you allegra for the draft honestly nothing will you know come out of it um it's never been the town council leadership um priority to listen to us so i mean this is good they will just read it and move on yeah because of the structure of our group that needs to change it needs to change Would you like me to read it aloud, or are you going to read it aloud? aloud? Uh, yeah, I already. I'm good. Oh, okay. I'm okay. good. Yeah, I read it. I read it already. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Allegra. But so, Allegra, yeah. Allegra, you're going to be sending that. Then that's. It, does anybody have any feedback? Does anyone think it's not strongly worded enough, or too strongly worded, or? I like what you wrote. The question is, will you know, will there be action? And that leads us to our topic, review of CSSJC charge, because we are advisory group. And as such, we can't make, you know, we don't have any power. Why do we exist in the first place? And yeah, that's and a frustration. You know, if we can't make if we don't have power to make changes, which we're just at the mercy of the town council. When town like uh, planning board, they make they make decision and carry out implement stuff. We cannot implement stuff here at this level unless we change. If I were to continue with this group, and that's by reason I'm I'm removing myself, it's like CSSJC has to be okay has to be a group that is beyond adversary. Same thing with HRC. And I go back to the disability access committee that I watched, they kept saying, we're, we're not, in, uh, we're adversary, we don't have any power. And that broke my heart. Like people are volunteering their precious time and they're feeling like less. That's really, really sad. That is the core of what CSSJC, new, new, new members and the returning ones need to focus on. It has to change. CSSJ should be calling the shot. You know, the, the, but the council president and, and, and vice, we need you so, 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 you need to come. This is, you know, we need to, you know, meet with you. This is what we want. But if we're adversary, they don't care. They won't listen to us. They just ignore. We don't have time. We have a packed schedule. They will come up with all kinds of excuses. So we really, really need to think about CSSJC what we're here for. This is not sustainable. I'm sorry. Over to you, Allegra. You're running the meeting. I'm oh, okay. I wasn't sure if I was gonna do that now. Um I see Deborah has her hand up. Yeah, um, I think that that's where like one of the things that I would recommend is just saying, uh, you know, we want to get a response by when. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like put in a time, you know, a date certain so that when they do not respond, <laughs> because, you know, that's their, their MO, then we can have like, we ask you to respond by this date and mm -hmm. nothing happens so that then we can, you know, say something about it. But I think that that what Ms. Pat talked about, that could also be a, you know, an extra line to, to add there is that, you know, we, you know, we demand that we be embedded within the decision-making process of the town, you know, something like that, so that it's clear mm -hmm. that we're, we're making these demands, you know what I'm saying? Um, so that then we can get, you know, the community support and so that some of this can change and we can get updated in terms of what our charge is. 
Um, because right now, I mean, that's the benefit of having gone through this for a year is to see, okay, how did everything actually work out? And we're seeing that we're, we're being put to the side and, and not listened to. So I think those would be the two kind of additions that I would make to the letter because we need yeah. to start documenting it. Yeah. Um, do you have a date in mind? I mean, today is what, June 16th? Is that right? 15th, something like that. <laughs> um and when do they meet when do they meet next the 26th 26th yeah so if if this gets to them what like tomorrow mm -hmm. and they meet the 26th would saying the by the 30th i mean because then they can talk about it at you know say we got this letter from cssjc Mm -hmm. They want a response by this Friday so that they would actually have time on that agenda to address it. Yeah. Um, and would that be realistic? Pretty, yeah. And two weeks seems fair. Okay. Um, just go to, so date. Allegra, make sure you, you indicate that you want that to be added to the town council package. Otherwise, okay. just sending them letter and yeah. not going through the packet um, wouldn't do anything. And again, the new CSSJC to think about really changing the status of advisory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen what happened with July 5th. We've seen what happened with APA funds. A year later is when, you know, it's going to be on the agenda at town council on the 26th. So encourage people to come out mm -hmm. that night for public comment about APA funds. I mean, we need community members to weigh in that, that night at town council meeting on public comment, yeah. I see Freke has his hand up. Um, let me put my hand down, first of all. Um, I would be fine with a discussion about a, the a change um, um, regarding the charge. Um, but I personally don't think the charge needs to change. And so my question would be, if we move away from being an advisory um, entity and we are supposed to have real power, what would that entail? What does, what is the practical exhibition of that real power? Are they examples that um, we already have of successful um, entities that exercise that power that we seek? Yeah, we have a, uh... oh, sorry, I need to raise my hand, I'm sorry, sorry. Ms. Pat, just you can. <laughs> I mean, planning board, they don't go to the town council, you know, after they make decisions, approve people. You know, there are different commit, uh, committees in our town that, you know, zoning board, this and that, but, you know, whatever, that they don't have to get clearance or approval, you know, through town council. I think this is something that, you know, that should really be looked at in order for us to see real progress change in our town. Otherwise you will end up just, I mean, I would think the vision of CSWG when we put this together, we didn't want our recommendation to get forgotten. So they're trying to shut us down. We wanted to continue. And then we came up with the idea of CSSJC, right Deb? Yeah. And the whole idea, we were very, you know, we, all people need to know is just go read the charge to collaborate with all the town. And the town council had no appetite to collaborate with us. We reach out to them, they read our demands, they just set it aside. No, it's not okay. It is not okay because we're a unique group for so purpose of equity, inclusion, and what is the other one? Diversity, more than anything else. 
So it is possible to add language like Deborah said, she's an attorney. Maybe she can do some research and come up with language so that when we say we want, for example, youth center, we're not talking about youth activities to different locations. That's not what the youth said that they want. We're not talking about adults just coming up with random ideas. No. When we talk about upper funds and we're saying that it wasn't transparent, why wasn't it transparent? You need to come to our meeting and give us presentation of how our funds was distributed to the um, business community. Because we don't have that power, we can't make them to come and do the presentation. And I'm talking about the finance department, for example. That's what I'm talking about. We need to be real here. Do the town, is the town really ready to make the real change? Or people are too scared to do the right thing? Thank you. So the hands I saw were Pamela, Deborah, Freke. So I, uh, I, don't, I just have a comment and I don't really know the answer to this, but I think it would be wise to take a look at the town charter um, that dictates how, um, how the creation of you know, boards and committees are, are created um, prior to adding additional language about a change in the charter, uh, because I think that that might require a change to the actual charter itself. And it is my understanding that next year, the charter will be reviewed. There's like, um, and there's an opportunity to change the charter. But I'm saying this without having uh, in-depth knowledge of, uh, about, about those things, but I, I think it would be important to do that. And then the other thing that I was going to point out is that um, as Ms. Pett has already pointed out, the June 26th meeting is going to uh, be, I don't know if anything other than ARPA is on their agenda. They're, it's my understanding that they are, there will be a presentation about the distribution that has occurred for ARPA funds and what are the possibilities for the remaining funds. Um, there are, some, um, and again, I don't know uh, the details, but I had, um, ask the finance director after the federal government voted to claw back ARPA funds, what the impact would be for the town of Amherst. And I know that they are thinking about a process by which they might be able to retain funds. And um, with those big agenda items, at, um, adding this at that time may mean that you may not get the, the time that you want to address the issue, that's just comments. Thank you, Pamela. Um, Deborah, then Freke, then I saw Philip's hand go up and then you can come back to Ms. Pat. Um, yeah, I mean, just responding to, to Freke, um, I think this is something that us as a committee, we need to discuss further. My thought, my um, viewpoint in regards to it is just in terms of looking and that's one of the things we gotta do, right? We have to look at, you know, what were our successes? What were our challenges this year, you know? So for me, as I'm looking at this past year, uh, you know, that is one of the challenges. One of the challenges is the fact that we went to countless town council meetings. We went to countless, you know, shared a variety of different times, you know, letters with them and so on and so forth. We were very clear in terms of steps that needed to be taken. And then, you know, Basically, it was just kind of like, yes, we're gonna, you know, try to do, try to do this and this and this and this, and then nothing came about, you know, in, in regards to anything that we stated. So that's where we're saying that we need to kind of look at where we're at, our charge, right? We have to do that. We have to do that analysis as a group and see if we're being effective and we're being efficient. Um, because if that's not happening, then a change needs to, to occur because that's how the community is gonna, is gonna trust us. 
is, is if they feel that we are going to actually have action take place. And, we, and we're a new committee. So we have to learn how to engage with the town council and with the town managers. Yeah, we created a charge, right? CSWG created a charge um, with a town manager, but, you, but it was us and it was just really massage tweaking a little bit by him. But it was, this, this was our language, but it, this is a new committee. So you always have to evaluate, you know what I'm saying? You always have to look at efficiencies of a committee and its charge, whether it's being effective. You know, and so it, it's just something that when you talk, so for me, my opinion is that we do need to make some changes. Now, it might not be your opinion, Frank, it might not be others, but we need to have that discussion because if we're not being effective the way that the charge is written, then what, what, is, what else can we do in regards to it so that we can be more effective? Thank you, Deb. Um, Freke, then Philip, then Ms. Pat, then I'll put my hand up too. Um, thank you, Ms. Pat and Deborah. I think um, what, like I'd mentioned previously, I'm, I'm fine with having that discussion. Um, there's always a space that exists for renewal. Um, but I worry that beyond the discussion, even if there is a change to the charge, that change is going to be more or less textual. Textual in the sense that you can put new words in the charge and that's not going to result in action being taken. Um, and so my question was, how do you, not you specifically, but how does the town government actually produce action? Now, taking a step back, I actually um, seem to believe that we've done okay. We've done okay, not because we have um, been victorious in a lot of the things that we've wanted, but because we've raised some issues that have been listened to by the town council, even if they haven't acted on what um, we've wanted. And so in that sense, we have been successful. There are a lot of other interests and a lot of other um, expectations within this town that have not been heard. It simply doesn't exist for the town council. And so to get the town council to listen, that in itself is some kind of victory. It doesn't mean that that's where we stop. It means that that's where we can start from. And then as um, was mentioned, we can find as a new council, better ways to liaise and act with um, the the town council as a committee and as we get more mature and as we become more known and as our interests begin to align then um, we can become more effective what we're going through now perhaps may just be growing pains and we shouldn't outrun the process by making changes that might not prove effective if we do so thank you Thank you, Philip. Yeah, uh, Pamela, I sent you an email while I'm talking, if you could look at that and then pull up um, what it is I sent. But it's essentially the charter and its conception of when it was made back in 2017. I had looked at it a while ago and it gives a flow chart kind of of who was on top from down and if you look at that it puts committees and commissions at the very bottom of that flow chart and in that flow chart i mean it's realistic in the way that it's it's being currently run and i think to your point miss pat of what we are feeling is that i think on hrc it becomes very difficult to have bylaws to have um actual things put in a charter in that way and I know at some point I was looking at um, the difference between a commission and a committee and a trust and planning board and all these other things. And the way that it looks like and it's flown into is that it is then, if you could scroll down to five, page five. Thank you, Pamela. So 
it's basically that to your point, Ms. Pat, the planning board, the zoning board, and the town clerk's office are essentially on the same level as a town manager, right? That is overseen then by the town council. And so I think that is why they are able to basically vote on things and put things through a lot quicker than any of the commissions or boards. Because if you look squirrel down, that is kind of where we are on boards and committees. I know it doesn't say, say either the CSSJC name or HRC's name, but I think that's our real limitation here. And so to that, and then I would just say that it probably becomes more of a general bylaw rule with town council. And um, if they're going to then look at the charter and rewrite the charter next year, then this year's election is gonna be pretty important to get people out that want to hold this flow chart because I think that's going to be the biggest obstacle is that everybody's just going to say, oh, well, you need to go through the town manager and town manager will approve your charge or we'll give you your charge or we'll whatever because that's how it's currently put in thank you family you can stop sharing thank you philip miss pat so um philip i'm glad you 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 brought this up because i occasionally you know have reviewed uh the charter and thanks, Ms. Um, Pamela, for bringing that up. I'm aware that the, the, the charter will be reviewed next year. Um, I know that the Lake Women's Border you know, sent us some questionnaire. And I think this body, CSSJC, should be on alert and be vigilant and get involved with that process when it comes up next year. Um, it's just a document, it can be changed. And we all pay taxes in this town. Um, so we should be able to give you know, input to it. But again, people are just afraid to speak up, that's the thing. So with CSSJC, if a couple people didn't go like out of the way to push stuff really, really harder, um, we would have been shut down with July 5th. We would have been shut down with upper funds. But, you know, some, some folks here, you know, decided to, even if it means canceling us, you know, by the powerful people, history will show the people who are really trying, you know, to do the right thing in our town. So, you know, try to adjust it, a document. You know, the role of CSSJC really, really needs to change if we want the change we're talking about. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, and thank you to, to Philip Freke and Deb as well, because I think everyone has some really good points. And I think that I kind of agree with the fact that like some of the things, some of the action steps outlined in our charge don't necessarily need to change but it's the power vested in this group that needs to change so it's it's that flow chart thing <laughs> that we just saw that needs to change because i think this group is still going to be about carrying on cswg's legacy and you know helping their recommendations come to fruition but how do we do that in a way that that has teeth um, and I, I, you know, looking at that flow chart, it's like the, the zoning board and the um, planning board are council appointed committees rather than town manager appointed committees. So I don't know if that's like the, the sticking point and if that's the part of our charge language wise that would need to change to say like, we are a council appointed committee. So that gives us more power. I don't know if that's like the, the truth of the matter or not, but if that's, if, if there's a simple tweak to language that would put us in a different category, that would be very nice and easy. But if that's not the case, then I think figuring out how to write the charge in a way that this committee does have more power is something that I'd be interested in learning more about. Um, 
And I think that in terms of what Deb was, Deborah was saying, I do think it would be important for us to do some sort of self-assessment because I think you know, we have these things that CSSJC has, or excuse me, that CSWG has outlined as things that we are supposed to be carrying on. And I think, I think in a way, the July 5th incident obviously took up a lot of time because it was really important and it highlighted a lot of the, the needs that are still here in town. Um, and I think that it, the, the focus was on getting, you know, um, why can't I think of the word, like getting justice for the kids and, and not really focusing on the nitty gritty of like, how are we going to build a youth center, that kind of stuff, even though that was part of the conversation because that would have been helpful for those kids before, during, and after the event. Um, so I think if we maybe as members, not not tonight, but if we have some time to look at the charge between now and the next meeting and think about kind of on each item, like where are we? Have we made, ha, has the needle moved at all in any of these things? And like, what, um, what, do we, where, where does the power lie to get the needle to move, I guess? Um, that would be a recommendation for kind of a task in between. Um, and I guess I just have a logistical question. I don't know who this is, who this is to, but I'm gonna just put it out there <laughs> if we have, um, so if, if D has resigned and Miss Pat is leaving us and Philip is leaving us, that leaves us with three active members. Is that enough for a committee to even function? Is there a rule about how many people have to be on a committee or just a rule that a quorum has to be present for a meeting to exist? It's a rule uh, that a quorum has to be present. Paul can change it to like, I think it's number wise is that since we are a committee of seven, is that like the official number? Five to seven, five to seven. Right. So if we went down to five, then you can do like a committee or a quorum of three is what okay. it would be. Okay. So Am I right on that, Pamela? Yeah, I, I think that's correct. Um, um, I believe you guys can still meet, but perhaps you can make decision. Is that correct? Right. Well, right. If, he, if, he, if he changes the number from five to seven, Three would be a quorum, and you could still make and make you could still meet and make decisions um, because you would have a quorum while he uh, while he moved to fill those positions. And um, I don't, I did not touch base with Angela. I don't know if she's been in touch with you, Allegra, about whether there are any applicants uh, for the vacant positions. Um, um. I'm sorry, I, dipping into your membership, so I I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah, I I haven't heard. So the only thing that I've heard, I heard from Paul that it would be now that the committee has been formed, it will be like the regular committee interview process where the chair or the co-chair would be involved in the interview process with the um, member from the resident advisory committee and then our staff liaison as well as Paul. Um, he said that they're working on scheduling. Um, and I mean, I spoke with some people at the Human Rights Hero Award, this, you know, all of the, all of the celebration that was had on Sunday, I spoke with some, some people who expressed interest to me. So I said, well, here's the process. Um, so Perhaps there will be some candidates soon, hopefully, if there aren't some already. Um, but I have not been contacted about actually scheduling any sort of interviews. I know okay. I encourage two candidates to apply. So that's all I can say. Deborah. Yeah, so I guess for me, um, yeah, one is, is for us to get candidates supply. So you're saying that the committee is set, it's active. So now we can send, right? We can recruit people and send people to, to apply and to go through the process, right? That's what you yeah. said, Allegra? Yes. Okay, okay. So that's good to know because I didn't know that, you know, the interview committee was in place and all of that stuff. So, so that I can, you know, recommend folks. But two, we need to be able to make decisions. I mean, we need to be able to, to meet and, and make decisions, even if it's just the three of us. 
So whatever it needs to happen, Allegra, if you can reach out to the town manager to make sure if he needs to change the number so that then we have a quorum with the three of us, then let's do that. Because I don't want to be on a committee because that's a waste of time for us to just meet and talk and talk and talk. You know what I'm saying? It's to talk and make decisions so that we can keep moving this, this forward. I agree. Um, so I will reach out to him and just say, look, you know, we have another change in membership. We have this many vacancies. What? Just make sure I understand and then can let our members know. I, I, I think that is five to seven. Can we put up the uh, CSSJC ch uh, charge again? I believe it's between five and seven yeah. members. That's what it was. Okay. And Philip, were you going to say something? Sorry. Yeah, I, I already mentioned to you i think i forget when i probably mentioned it to you but if you need me to stay on until july i can stay on until july to get you through july and then this obviously becomes an issue for you in august but at least it helps this committee well, and thank you for that philip um, thank you philip <laughs> all right yeah so I just lost the agenda again. So in terms of- It will of, be public comment. Okay. Oh, um, no, no, not yet. No. Not yet. Goodbyes to departing members. Right. Well, Miss Pat, we're gonna miss you. <laughs> um, <laughs> your leadership has been so important to this committee and you know, I think you've brought so many things to the forefront and made sure that they stayed um, pertinent in our conversation. So I really appreciate you for not, not being afraid to make sure that what usually doesn't get talked about gets talked about. Um, so I, I really, I appreciate that about you. And I hope that you will make many public comments in future meetings. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if you wanted to say a few words or if other committee members wanted to say things first or. Yeah. So I definitely, maybe we can go and then Ms. Pat, if you don't mind going last, but yeah, I mean, Ms. 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 Pat is a mentor of mine and obviously an inspiration and a leader in the community, um, as we know for many years and, you know, and just, Make sure that, you know, as, as you say, Ms. Pan, I've heard you say many times, you speak truth to power. Um, and you're someone that's not afraid to do it, even at the at the uh, at the point to to, you know, to yourself, right? Risk to yourself and things like that, um, which is admirable. And we we know, you know, I don't have to recite the times, but the times when you've said things and people try to shut you down, you know, and things like that. Um, so obviously, you know, you're going to be very much missed. Um, we'll continue though in, in, in your spirit and your, with your legacy, because obviously I served with, with you in CSWG and then had the pleasure of serving with you and the honor of serving you with you again in CSSJC. Um, and so we're going to continue, you know, with your legacy on this committee. And obviously, um, hope that you continue to support us and, you know, and take part in, you know, and just make sure that people are out there knowing that that we're doing this and that we're not going to give up, you know. Um, and for me, I don't know how, how how many years, but, you know, I'm planning to stay until my term. I don't know if I'll run, you know, if I'll do it again, but at least until the end of my term. Um, so I definitely plan to, to, to keep it going and, and, and keep moving it in a very strong way and continue the pressure. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pat, I have uh, appreciated this past year getting to know you and just working with you. And I think the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of you is resilience. I have heard you say many times that you are a member of this community for 40 plus years and you've been dealing with this for 40 plus years. I've only been dealing with it for a very short time and I sometimes pull out my hair with some of that. So I think your resilience is amazing in your willingness to always give back in this community. And I, I know that you deeply, deeply care about this community is very evident in everything that you do, everything that you say. And 
appreciate everything that you say, especially when no one else wants to say it. You are the first person to raise up your hand right there and say it. And I think it's very funny. One of the first times that I met you um, when you told me, don't believe everything that you've heard about me or everything that you, <laughs> people say about me. <laughs> I think that has hold up pretty true. I, I, over the past year of getting to know you, I, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. I actually dislike a lot of these kind of farewells because it seems like it's a full stop when it's not really a full stop. There's a lot more that can still keep going as we go forward. Um, I, I, I think I second what Philip has said, a, a word that comes to mind is tenacious. Um, when I, I think of you, I'm hoping that um, I'll get to see you with the um, events you have planned for Juneteenth. Um, and uh, what I'll have to say, I'll have to say it to you one on one. Um, but I, I appreciate your work, which is ongoing, it doesn't stop. Thank you all. So, um... Before I make my remarks, I would like to really appreciate Philip. Um, to me, for me, when I, um, the very first day uh, when we first met the CSSJC, so I was like checking everybody out. I'm like, you know, I find you, Philip, very intriguing, like so bold, like I spoken say it, it is and you've been very consistent like speaking true to power so i really appreciate your courage and bravery in this town and you know you, i i can tell that you really really want to see progress in our town i'm really really physically going to like miss you um i was hoping that you will run for you know town council but you know you're living us not fair life is not fair thank you for everything you have an amazing family i've had the privilege of interacting with your family. So I, I really, you're a blessing at your young age that um, you're the same age with some of my kids. Like you just, the sky is your limit. Keep up the good work. Keep up, you know, people find out the truth. And when people find out the truth, guess what? They respect you. People will gravitate towards you for solutions. Keep up the good work. I also want to put a plug on uh, Dr. Dimitri Shabazz, you know, for everything that we've discussed tonight, just what is CSSJC is all about. Like we are not being utilized as a resource. I just want to appreciate her. She's a trailblazer. She's done so much in our, in our community from, you know, our history, keeping our history you know, with, you know, local people push and advocating for justice. You know, she was instrumental in doing some very good work for CSWG through her company, uh, Seven Gen. Um, she's just a problem solver and whatever you need her, uh, she's there. She truly, truly cares. She's not about, you know, lining her pocket. She just say the way it is. And, you know, um, I think this is like, um, I hope our, our town council will really, you know, rethink the way they treat some committees. Because if we continue to lose, you know, resources and committees, we are not helping our town move forward. So I just want to appreciate her very, very much. It's a very personal dear friend to me and the family. So I really thank her for everything she's done for our town, for CSSJC, her consulting work with CSWG. I just wanted to put that plug. So I'll let you guys, you know, say something about Philip and Dr. Demetria Shabazz before I do my own remarks. If that's okay. Yes, Ms. Pat. Um, so, Philip, I was 
very, very sad to hear that you were leaving. I feel like you've been a champion um, for justice and especially for youth this short year that we've been working together. Um, and I really appreciated your perspective and your bravery in speaking your personal truths during town council meetings that, that you know, that's not easy to do. And it's not always received well. Um, so I, I really wanted to commend you for that. And like Miss Pat, I'm gonna miss you a lot. Um, it's been really fabulous to, to get to know you and to have walked alongside you in this. Um, but we wish you nothing but the best for your next endeavor. Thank you. Deborah, you have something to say for Philip and, and, and D Shabazz? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, Phil, uh, definitely, you know, it was great to, to work with you this past year. I think we met and did a little bit of work last year at the festival, you know, the, the community day that we had when I was working with uh, Julie's Ford Harriet and Healthy Living and you jumped right in and helped with the cooking and serving and everything else. And I was like, all right, this guy, this guy's cool, cool dude. You know, he just jumped right in and started doing some things. And then obviously, um, I really enjoyed like your thoughtful comments throughout the year um, and, you know, the bravery that it, it takes to, to say what you, what you said um, and, you know, bringing an example, sharing things that, you know, happen in your life and things like that, which obviously make a connection with people, um, you know, definitely a loss uh, for us in the group and for, for the community um, because of your leadership, not only, you know, here in CSSJC, but also with HRC. Um, it's going to be sorely missed. Of course, you know, we wish you only the best, but selfishly, we wish you weren't leaving. <laughs> so, um, but that that is how life goes. And, you know, and I know you're going to do great things wherever you're at. And obviously, people are blessed to get you out in um, California. And then I'll just say about D2, um, obviously, as uh, Miss Pat already talked about, um, you know, with the, I've known her for many years. She's been obviously, you know, a part of this community, an integral part of this community, a leader in this community. Um, you know, we've been colleagues at UMass too. Um, and then, you know, got to work with her more closely at NCSWG uh, through her company. And they just brought invaluable um, information and data uh, and research and really were able to talk to com to the community you know and it was it was you know credible information hearing the voices of the community which is what i really appreciated um and it wasn't just kind of like going and, and just talking to the usual people that everyone talks to but really going and talking to the voices that, that aren't heard uh, within our community and uh, it made a world of difference in cswg and obviously that information is a lot of the information that we're still relying upon and then in CSSGC, you know, being a, a co-chair with Allegra and providing a lot of her leadership. Um, so definitely sorry to see her um, um, not be part of CSSGC, uh, but I know she'll continue to do great things in the community and obviously expect also um, her to continue to follow us and help us and support us. Um, because if we don't have the support from, you know, from you all, from Ms. Pat, from Dee, from others, um, then, you know, we won't be able to do the work that, that we need to do, um, you know, because it's an uphill battle, as we all know. <laughs> so, but yeah, those are my words. So, Frankie, you have something to say about Philip? Oh, you did already, right? Um, no, but it's going oh. to be very brief, both for Philip and for um, the, I, I think I'll miss your grounding influence uh, in some of the discussions. What we have is a space that um, we have to bring our full selves and our experiences, um, our desires and expectations. And so it can get really um, contentious, but you, you're grounded. And I appreciate that. And Anything else that I'll have to say, I'll have to say to you one-on-one, um, -on -one, but I really appreciate your work here. And 
likewise for BA. I haven't gotten to know her that well besides work uh, on the committee and it's very clear um, her love for the committee. Frankly, no one would be in this gathering if they didn't have some affection for the town and a consideration for ways that they were looking to improve um, this town. And so I appreciate uh, the past year and all that is brought over the different things that we've had to um, discuss. So it will be um, a loss to miss everyone that is leaving. Anyway, you're going to be here for one more month, um, I think. Feel so again. I'll talk with you later, but thanks so much. Okay, Allegra, anything for Shabazz? Well, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I feel weird saying something without her being here. Um, so I'll obviously reach out to her as well. But I, I don't know that I would have gotten so involved in this work in Amherst and in this committee itself, if I hadn't learned from Dee. Um, and she's a very strong leader in this community and I hope that she will again, remain involved in other ways and that we'll hear her voice and feel her presence. Um, and then I don't know if Philip has anything to see. And I also wanted to offer Pamela an opportunity to speak. Although she's not a committee member, she is. She already here. did before you came in. Oh, but I she would it. do it again. Yeah. That's yeah. that's my fault. I just, I just have she a quick for thing. Me, but, oh, she I did. have a quick right. thing for, for Deb, just real quick. And then Pamela, you can go. I promise it'll be quick. I just want to say that uh, Deb's energy is just great. I, I really appreciated that coming into this committee. That was my um, first experience on meeting Deb. And I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be one of our co chairs this will be really great. Like, I really felt like I was like, oh, we're all going to be heard. It's going to be a collaborative type of thing rather than more just taking it on. And so I really appreciated her leadership style and everything that she has done. I'm actually going to follow up on two things that uh, Freke said, and, and that is that um, uh, I don't think anybody would be here unless they're passionate about the group and people are only hurt by the things that they care about, things that they don't care about don't hurt them, um, and they are not invested in them. And so um, I think it's evident that that everyone here is um, invested in making the town better because they care about it. And then the second thing is that um, you know, it's not a full stop. You know, the the wonderful thing about uh, public work is that there is always a public comment, right? There is always an opportunity to continue to be a part of the conversation, um, regardless of whether you're on the a voting part of the committee or not. There's always that opening for people to continue to express their views and opinions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll be really brief. Um, first of all, I will say you all have added uh, value to my life, getting to know you all. I think it takes a lot of courage uh, for folks to volunteer their time and speak their truth. I know it's not easy sometimes. So I appreciate each and every one of you, what you've contributed to CSSJC. Yes, we may not feel that it's a lot, but we, you know, you all have planted some sort of seed that hopefully is, you know, is growing. So you should be proud of yourselves, you know, for what, you know, um, have been accomplished. So I want to, you know, say a few words yeah, with individually. So I'll start with Freke. Freke, we're from the same country, and I was hoping to get to know you more, but unfortunately that didn't happen. But um, I hope um, that you continue to be yourself 
I appreciate your calmness, even when you, you disagree with majority, you're still able to carry yourself well. So um, whatever truth meant for you, continue to, to do so. That's all I can say. Um, Deborah, where can I start? So I've known you in, you know, in this community for a long time. And so when you know, we served together at CSWG, I was like, hmm, okay, let's see, you just surprised me. You know, you're this, you know, um, just surprised me like very vocal, you know, to the point. People know how you're thinking, no nonsense woman. I just love that, you know? So I really appreciate, you know, getting much closer to you. Uh, you're very attentive, you know, you really call it out. Continue the great work. So I appreciate that. And so Allegra, Allegra actually, believe it or not, is schoolmate to my first son. So she has sent me a, uh, a seminar or something by an organiz national organization. And I responded back, I, you know, through um, your defund group or something. And then in the email exchange, she goes, you know, I went to school with your son, Michael. I'm like, okay. So from that day on, you know, I looked at you in Nigerian way, like more like in respectful way, like a daughter. And you just amaze me the amount of, you know, strength in the sense that you juggle so much and you make it look so easy. You know, mother of two young children involved in so many, you know, things in our town, being vocal, you know, your leadership with CSSJC, listening to everybody, really being attentive, uh, doing behind the scene work. You've done great, you know, co-chairing with, you know, um, Dr. Shabazz, uh, Dimitri Shabazz. So I appreciate your leadership. Continue the, the good work. I hope you will consider continue as chair. It doesn't even have to be co-chair, whatever the new group decide to do. And I've talked about Philip. So I'll go to uh, Ms. Pamela, you know, um, when I heard that you know, a black woman was hired as DEI director, I was super excited. And um, I'm getting to know you, but I don't feel like, you know, I really got to know you as I leave um, CSSJC, but I know your job is very stressful. You know, you juggle a lot. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your wisdom. What I will say to you is um, <laughs> for you to, um, not be too hard on yourself. I, I don't want you to feel that you're not being appreciated. It's just that you walked into a town that has, has so many communities. I mean, I mess is not unique. You know, we have a lot of challenging issues and, you know, don't feel that you, you alone can solve the problem. And sometimes when people make comments, uh, please do not take it personal, it's all I can say. But I'm around and I hope to get to know you more in the future. Um, but thank you, you know, for everything that you're doing. You've done a lot in a very short time. I have noticed it and I appreciate you. I know Jen is not here tonight. Jen and I actually go back many, many years. We actually work together for an organization. So I've known Jen for a long time. You know, what else can I say? She juggles so much, she does so much. Her role can feel like unappreciated, but I think people know this. Um, I know it's not easy. I, I appreciate her. And for me, finally, I think the way I look at my exit with CSSJC is that my excitement is I don't have to worry about open meeting law anymore, but I just feel that I'll continue to raise my voice and push. I don't have to join any town government to be effective. Um, 
I think, you know, my focus right now, I'm very excited about BBAAA. Um, people are really getting curious, uh, wanting to know more. There's a lot of interest beyond Black com business community. So that's really exciting for me. And uh, there's something about starting a program, an organization that excites me. And so as much as BBA is not new, we established in 2016, but uh, COVID, you know, kind of, you know, we're inactive for a couple of years, but now there is so much interest. And so I'm putting my energy there. Uh, PCA, uh, Progressive Coalition of MS Area, this is an election year. So my plate is full. I have four businesses that I run, but I will continue to support CSSJC. It's sort of like a baby for me, and I'm not going to promise that I will tune in every time, but I'll try to follow their, you know, whatever is happening. And I know how to reach each, each and every one of you. I may not do public comments, but I know how to, to get to you all, at least. I have your emails. Thank you all. Yeah, feel free to text me too. You know me, <laughs> I text you all the time, yeah. So one thing I want to mention is I, I really would like us to get together and maybe have, you know, get a bite or something like just, but somebody had mentioned, what about open meeting law? I will no longer be, you know, a member as of after tonight's meeting. So do people still want to get, you know, go to a restaurant or something or would that put some of you into trouble for open meeting law? I love food. Yeah, I think as long as we keep it social, we're not making any decisions. Right. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, co-chair, I don't know what you want to do. We're chair because co-chair, the other co-chair resigned. So, right. mm. so it's up to you to reach out and see what you want to do. We can even do it at somebody's home if they want, you know, just, you know, an hour just to just chill. And if people don't feel that they want to do it, that's fine too. And but I had, I had a good time when we did with CSWG. Remember and with the Germany? Germany. It yeah, was, we really nice. yeah. was really nice. Yeah. Philip, when do you leave? Leave. Uh, my official get in the car leave date is July 24th. And my weekend of that is booked. So. Okay. But the weekdays. If people are open up to the weekdays of the week of the 18th or even before that, I'm okay. okay. And staff are also invited, Miss Pamela and Jen. Jen came to the CSWG one. So please, if you can make it, please. Thank you. Yeah, she. Um, we use actually that picture in our presentation, a picture huh? from that group. There's a picture that was taken at that yeah. gathering that's yeah. used in yeah. our I saw that. Yeah. 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 Maybe we can send like a doodle poll or something. Yeah. 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 It doesn't have to be anything fancy, even if it's lunchtime yeah. or something, you know, just to chill. That's all. Yeah. I think that would be so a nice public comment. Yes. Okay. Um, moving right along to public comment. Uh, I, the things that I'm supposed to say, I don't have in front of me, but. Um, we allow public comment um, if you want to raise your hand. I see one attendee in the audience. I'm not seeing a raised hand. I see Freke has his hand raised. No. No, no, no. no. I had a question, okay. but I answered myself immediately. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, if nobody would like to make public comment, I suppose we can adjourn, correct? Should we figure out our next meeting for July? Yeah, next meeting, probably yeah. a good, I dropped my phone onto the floor. So I'm going to pick that up. Let's look at my calendar. Um, so the and, second. Um, Vera has raised her hand. 
Vera has raised her hand. Lovely. Uh, one um, second. Do I have to do something? No. I'll, I'll bring her in just, just a second. Thank you. Hi, sorry, I was multitasking illegal women voters um, Zoom as well, but I wanted to um, thank Philip and thank Mrs. Pat for their service to this committee. Um, lots of energy, effort, time, and um, you led with your hearts. You made some really crucial comments um, to the public, and that's so powerful when people are scared. Um, there's so many people that come up to us and say, you know, you're so brave, keep going. Um, I can't speak any, you know, I can't speak up, but I'm really appreciating what you are able to do. So, you know, I think I want to leave um, with this comment for both of them that they are um, courageous and that they have inspired a lot of people to, um, to do the same and your efforts, um, have been felt and and it will have ripple ripple um fill up your you'll be in california but that that earthquake wave <laughs> we'll be feeling it over here um and mrs pat you know thank you so much for not giving up on amherst um and i look forward to continue organizing for power with you thank you thank you thank you there um so looking at July, the 12th would be the second Wednesday, if that works for people. Did we just lose Deb? No, somehow Deborah ended up in the audience. Oh, no. Maybe her, her, her computer internet. Let's see. Should I call her? She's in the audience, I think. Oh, okay. There. Oh, she's back. Okay. Yeah. We I lost know. you. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what happened. I didn't do anything. So. <laughs> the only thing I can think of is that when I tried to click uh, Vera back to uh, panelist, I moved you instead. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's no problem. Because I could hear I could see you all, but you couldn't hear me. Oh. So, <laughs> so um, so the twelfth, uh, the twelfth would work would work for me. Um Fricky. It should um be an appropriate time as well. Okay. Yeah. Is so six thirty. Yeah, six thirty would be fine. And Philip, can you make that? Uh, yeah, 6.30 on the 12th, I can make. Okay. All right, so 6.30 on the 12th, it will be. Okay. Um, and I don't know if this was discussed before I got on the call, but I know there was the um, difficulty with posting. And I just wonder if when we send out the, when I send out, I guess, the request for agenda items if if the meeting can get posted then kind of as a reminder even if the agenda isn't complete just so at least when we we have the place saver if that would if that would work that's and so I, I yeah so I did uh, apologize I'm not quite sure what happened this last week but I know that uh, a lot has been on Jennifer's plate she graduated from UMass. I was out of work for uh, a couple of weeks and there were a ton of events. So I'm, I'm not certain, but, um, uh, and she and I post meetings differently. Uh, I think we use a different process because the records for this group are go to a different um, place than the records that I, for the group that I do. When she normally um, posts, the meeting do you automatically get a calendar invite and then uh an invite a week before and um a day before i think so yeah so um yeah so i'm not i'm not certain what i think 
you know, I apologize. I just think that there was a lot on her plate over the last couple of weeks. I, I'm not certain what happened. I absolutely understand you are a department of two and we want that to change. <laughs> um, so is that it? Are we done? Okay. <laughs> um, it is 851. This I think might be the record for the shortest of our meetings. <laughs> um, so well done. Again, Philip D, Miss Pat, we will miss, well, I'm not gonna say bye, Philip, yet because he'll be here next month, but Miss we'll Pat. Miss him, him. <laughs> yeah. Did I say her? No, no, I said no, I didn't say uh -huh. her. I said <laughs> she, he'll be more moving out of town. That's why. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um Miss Pat, we will miss you next month. We will miss D but we hopefully will still hear from you and we will see everybody on the 12th. Yep. And hopefully we will see people on the 19th socially at many of the Juneteenth events around. I'll be out of town. So no. it's something that was planned a year ago. Sorry, sorry. yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure it will be fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, bye-bye everyone. Bye everyone. Bye everybody. Take care.